but this season he has been a Rolls Royce of a defender, Justin. There's a reason they call him Caldini. Um, he's been fantastic, <laughs> absolutely fantastic. He's a player I expect to really kick on next season and um, improve even more, which is, again, is, is quite staggering. Uh, my biggest disappointment, um, <laughs> I could have picked any of the West Brom squad, to be quite frank. <laughs> where would have they Where would they have been without Andy Vyman's goals yeah, this season? Scary. It's scary to think, <laughs> isn't it? For him to be entrusted by Neil Warnock, who is the Championship greatest ever manager um, at many of the clubs that he's been at, I think it just goes to show of his reliability and quality as a goalkeeper. You saying Lee Camp's been a better goalkeeper than Kieran Westwood? I would argue that, yeah. <laughs> it's worth mentioning, by the way, Lee Camp is just in second cousin. Uh, leave that there. Hello and welcome back to another episode of The Stopwatch. And ladies and gentlemen, it is awards season. Yes, that's right. It's a special edition of The Stopwatch this week. We're going to give you our awards for the championship this season. Obviously, we've got the second tier awards, which we'll be doing at a later date. But for now, we're going to do the awards that we're not going to include in the second tier awards because you know, <laughs> they're big. Um as always, this is the Championship Show with a little twist. It's five topics, a two-minute timer, and two hosts. We've Jeff dressed up especially for the occasion. I've got suited and booted. I'm Ryan Dilks. Justin is also here as well. We're from the Second Tier Podcast. Let's get right into it. So, Justin, simple one, going back completely on what I was just saying about not including these awards in our awards. Who is the player of the season this season? I think there's an obvious answer here, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, it's got to be it's got to be Mitrovic. I was trying to think of something funny to say there quite quickly, but didn't quite materialise. But yeah, it's 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 Big Al, isn't it? The Serb, uh, forty-one goals this season, quite astonishing number of uh, of goals for any team, for any source of creativity that team has. So yeah, scoring that many goals is just absolutely ridiculous. I don't normally side with strikers just because they score goals because of players behind them, but to score that many goals for Fulham this season is just out of this world. If you score plus 30 in a season, yeah. then you've had a very good season. For the guy to have got plus 40, <laughs> he's just mental. And he's still on course to break the Guy Whittingham record, the modern day championship record for, what is it, 42 goals in mm -hmm. a championship 42, season? Yeah, yeah he, he's going to break that at the rate he's going. So I think it's pretty certain that Alexander Mitrovic is going to be everyone's player of the season. A, a decent shout out for me, I think, is Dominic Solanke, who himself mm -hmm. is having a brilliant goal scoring season. If he wasn't, you know, behind Alexander Mitrovic in the scoring charts, then I think a lot of people would be giving him a lot of praise this season. But he's been completely overshadowed. But he's had a remarkable season in himself, hasn't he? He has. And you know, I enjoyed him last season because his, his ability to play with his back to goal um, as, as a very good deep line forward at times. Um, and his finishing abilities improved again this season. So, yeah, he's, he's, he's really unlucky that Alexander Mitrovic has had a, a, a goat season, essentially. Yeah, but he's still been brilliant, hasn't he? And he's got one without so many sticky situations with some crucial goals at crucial times. And he's finally living up to the potential that many people thought he was going to mm -hmm. have. Um, and I fully expect him, whether he's in the Premier League with Bournemouth next season or not, I fully expect him to kick on next season and start to show how good a player he can be. What's next topic, Justin? Which player is most improved upon last season? Good question. I'm going to go for Jed Spence of Nottingham Forest slash Middlesbrough. Um, the loan spell has always been a bit of a weird one, really, hasn't it? Him being mm. lent out to a side who are right next to, well, slightly ahead of Middlesbrough in the table. But it's because Jed Spence was kind of lost at Borough and they just didn't really see him featuring in Neil Warnock's plans at the start of the season. And he's been given this chance under Steve Cooper and boy, has he taken that chance. He has been one of the best right-backs in the, in the division this season. Mm -hmm. Probably a, a very good argument that he's been the best right-back. Yeah. He's been brilliant going forwards, brilliant um, defensively as well. He's built up a brilliant partnership with Brennan Johnson. And that's the reason why he's been linked with loads and loads of big European clubs, isn't it, Justin? Yeah, it's quite bonkers how um, how well he's come on this season. Like he wasn't he wasn't bad last season, but you could see there were a lot of holes in his game. Whereas this season he's looked almost flawless. Defensively, he's improved massively. Going forwards, he's always had that ability to go forwards, but this season he's carried that with an arrogance. You need to really thrive in that role. Um, and as you say, he's been absolutely brilliant. And yeah, no surprise to see him links. He's gonna he's gonna have a big bunny move come the summer, definitely. Who's your most improved, Justin? I'm going to go with Victor Goyorquez. Um Now, 
might raise a few eyebrows, but when when Coventry bought him, uh, when 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 in fact when they loaned him last season, ra- again raised eyebrows. Quite a few people were laughing at him, especially Swansea fans. But this season, he's really taken on the mantle of being a top top player for Coventry, and he's he's thrived, you know, as 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 the talisman for for the Sky Blues this season, and to score fifteen goals. Um, in what is your what has been your first full season of playing football at a professional level is is quite astonishing. Got a call up to Sweden squad as well. Yeah, he's, he's a player I expect to really kick on next season and improve even more, which is again is is quite staggering. Yeah, he didn't really pull up any trees prior to this season, did he? And then they had that bonkers start to the season where he was just scoring for fun. <laughs> did drop off a bit afterwards, but then he's managed to pick himself up and be a consistent goal scorer for them. He's been great. Um, Justin, who's been the biggest disappointment in the second tier this season? Yeah, there's there's been quite a few, and um, it's it's quite hard to it's quite hard to pin it on one player. But I, I, I'm going to have to pin it on a uh, on a manager. Uh, I'm going to say Mick McCarthy. Um, I had high hopes for Cardiff at the start of this season under Mick McCarthy. I know they they dropped off a little bit towards the end of last season, um, but the 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 spell ended yeah quite terribly um, under under him this season. Obviously being sacked in November um, and it's quite a drop off to where we expected Cardiff to be and as I say I, I, I expected them to be competing at the top of the table with the squad that they had um, I know there were some factors against him but yeah it was it was yeah a massive disappointment to, to see how that ended and unfortunately Cardiff are paying the price right now for that yeah, but it's mental to think now that we thought Cardiff might be a playoff team um, this season, but it's just not happened at all. And they've just not really looked like they're getting going at any point. Mm-hmm. In another season, they may have been in trouble of going down if it wasn't for, you know, four teams with points deductions and also being very bad at the same time. Uh, my biggest disappointment, um, <laughs> I could have picked any of the West Brom squad, to be quite <laughs> frank, but I'm going for someone who I've picked out a few times this season. That's Grady yeah. Dean Garner. Um, he has had issues off the pitch and it's just not worked for him at all over the course of the season. And I do feel really sorry for the guy. He's just not got going at any point. And every time he he's had a game where you thought, OK, that was all right. Mm-hmm. And he may build upon it. He just hasn't. Um, he looks so low on confidence and he doesn't seem to be getting back to him anytime soon. Um, he's not had it for two years now. And I thought considering he was really poor in the Premier League last season with West Brom and he was brilliant in the Championship the season before, I thought the drop down in a level may suit him, but he just hasn't. And him in particular, I think, is the one West Brom player out of all the disappointments in that West Brom squad who's really not lived up to the expectations that I had for him at the start of the season, which is a real shame. He may still be able to get his career back on track, but it's going to have to take a big big turnaround at this point, I think, unfortunately. Justin, what's next topic? Who's your most underrated player of the season? Most underrated player of the season. I'm going to go for someone who I was absolutely appalled not to see included in the official championship team of the season uh, at the awards due that happened a few days ago. And that's Cal Naismith at Luton. What a season he has, he has had. Um, this Luton side is made up of so many hardworking players who are all pretty much equally as talented, but... Naismith in particular is someone who I think has really stood out amongst this Luton side. Um, Before this, he was good. He was a fairly solid championship defender. This season, he has been a Rolls-Royce of a defender, Justin. There's a reason they call him Caldini. Um, He's been fantastic. (laughs) Absolutely fantastic. Um, Someone you're a big fan of as well, Justin. I I love him. He, He gives at least 7 out of 10 every performance, no matter where he plays. When he was at Wigan, he was incredible. Um, his, his goal scoring abilities when he was there in that season where they went down were, were was quite astonishing. Um, and recently, they've been um, Nathan Jones has been deploying him just in front of the defence because obviously personnel um, absences. So yeah, and he's still putting in big performances. What a player! What a left foot! Love the guy. He needs he needs some recognition. And he absolutely does. He absolutely does. Who are you saying, Justin? I'm going with uh, I'm going with Andy Vyman. Um Now, for a player to hit 20 goals and I can't remember how many assists it is, but he also he's, he's, he's nearing double figure assists as well. Uh, and to not be recognised in the uh, team of this season, uh, recent team of the season, is is quite astonishing. I think it just goes to show the quality of individuals in the league this season because Harry Wilson's been astonishing, but Andy Vyman has been a constant source of goals and creativity for Bristol City this season. A Bristol City side that has struggled. Um, and he's been the mainstay going forwards. Um, and as well as that, he's been deployed just about everywhere on the pitch as a forward, as a right wing back, as a centre mid and as a centre attacking midfielder as well. He's he's 
he's, it's been a ridiculous season for him. He's best goal scorer this season, and I can't see him stopping. Where would have they? Where would they have been without Andy Vyman's goals this yeah, season? Scary. It's scary to think, <laughs> isn't it? But he has been amazing, and he's another one who before this season hadn't really pulled up many team, many trees at championship level, but this season he's been fantastic. And finally, just in second tier retro time, this is my favourite bit of the show. And um, who would you say has been the best goalkeeper in championship history? Interesting to see who you say. Interesting. You don't need to ask me, do you? It's got to be the big man, Paddy Kenny. Um, now it is quite easy to pick Paddy Kenny because we love Paddy Kenny as a character, and he's he, he was a Neil Warnock disciple that we we mentioned before. But actually, for him to be entrusted by Neil Warnock, who is the Championship's greatest ever manager um, at many of the clubs that he's been at, I think it just goes to show of his reliability and quality as a goalkeeper. Um, there were numerous promotions, the likes of QPR, and obviously there was uh, with Sheffield United as well. Um, and he's and he's still done the business in the Premier League as well. He's probably been quite unfortunate that he's not been given a longer spell in the Premier League. I remember watching the Man City QPR game where Man City won the title, and Paddy Kenny pulled off a couple of worldy saves. Did his very best to stop that title from happening. Um, yeah, he's, he's a quality keeper, and um, and quite frankly, deserves the recognition. Absolutely. My best goalkeeper in championship history is Kieran Westwood. Someone I've always been quite fond of um, when he was at Sheffield Wednesday, which is where I think most people recall his best days. He was sensational. I mean, he was actually quite good at Coventry as well before that as well, but he's always been a really consistent goalkeeper and his compilations of his best saves are pretty astonishing. He he knows how to make it look good for the cameras, but he also knows how to pull off a worldy save at the same time. And he, in there's a reason why Sheffield Wednesday fans remember him so fondly for his time there because he was some goalkeeper, some leader as well. Um, and he's just someone I've always been a big fan of, Justin. He's also got a brilliant kick. He does the older side <laughs> kick, which I always like with a goalkeeper. You're a big fan of uh, Westwood? I'm, I'm not his biggest fan. I think there are better goalkeepers. Longevity, Kieran Westwood's up there. I think Lee Camp wants a word as well, but he's a decent keeper at this level, certainly, but not a scratch on Paddy. Not a scratch. You're saying Lee Camp's been a better goalkeeper than Kieran Westwood? I would argue that, yeah. <laughs> it's worth mentioning, by the way, Lee Camp is just in second cousin. Uh, leave that there. And there we go. That wraps it up for another special edition of The Stopwatch. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Drop us a like if you've enjoyed and please subscribe for more content like this. We're particularly keen, by the way, to your answers on any of the awards that we've just dished out there particularly most improved very interested to hear that one anyway we've been the second tier podcast you can find us on twitter at second tier pod i'm ryan dilks one that's just in peach 27 we'll be back very soon and thank you for watching <laughs>